Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 20 of the lockup. Or how? Yeah, whatever. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my co-host. Brian Adams. It's very tiring, man. I'm, I'm tired. It was a long weekend. It was a very busy weekend in the world of professional wrestling. Um, starting Friday but and, and leading into Sunday with uh, the TNA Bound for Glory pay-per-view. Bound for glory. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, well, I guess we'll start off with that. You know, TNA Bound for Glory weekend. Um, there was a live event on Friday, uh, October second, and images of the arena taken by fans have surfaced online, and they said there was only about two hundred and fifty people in attendance. And looking at these, yeah, looking at these photos. It looked like maybe it was just people in the floor seats. Everything else, all the seats were empty. They didn't even tarp it off. They were just empty seats. It was pretty much an empty arena. Damn, that's sad. It, it very well is sad. Um, so TNA has one more thing on the table, or one more episode, I guess, with Destination America, and that they they're looking at it as a like a best of kind of show. Uh huh. We don't. We still to this point do not know what's going on with TNA. Yeah, that's you know when I when I watched um, last week's episode, there was no mentioning of their TV deal. There was nothing. Yeah, nothing after Bound for Glory. It's like tonight is like the end, and that's it. Which is really sh- or uh, not tonight, yesterday. And it's, it's very strange, you know. Um, which also leads me to like I, I mentioned last week, you know I, I feel there's something there with TNA and WWE, you know? I remember I, I I threw the theory at you that I had heard elsewhere on another podcast, and this was the first time you had heard this theory, and you were kind of like, you could kind of see it, mm-hmm. you know? But um, going more into that theory, your boy, Finn Balor, WWE just had an NXT Live show on Friday in Nashville, home of TNA offices. So your boy Finn Balor goes on Twitter and posts a photo of him doing a DX crotch chop at the TNA offices. Nice. Yeah. Bonds to that, TNA star Grado takes a photo in front of WWE building, to which TNA official Bob Ryder commented saying the war has begun, or something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what the comment was. But... Just kind of funny that they would troll each other that way, you know. And usually, you know, this is something there in the past. If if it, for Finn Balor to go and publicly post a photo of him in front of a TNA office, that's something WWE would frown upon, especially because their social media accounts are pretty much linked to the company. Right. But yet t- WWE has not said anything about it. They just kind of let it go. That's very strange to me. It's, you know, with everything that you've been pointing out last week's episode and the things you've just added to it, it would, you would almost buy into the fact that maybe Vince bought TNA and, you know, it would make sense why the whole Global Force thing kind of just fizzled out, you know? Well, I was uh, hearing that the, the thing with the Global Force was that was Jeff Jarrett's send off and that was part of the deal of him selling the rest of his stock to TNA was that he... You know, his send-off, besides being inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame, was that he got to start his Global Force Wrestling in TNA and then kind of go from there. Right. Um, also, speaking of TNA Hall of Fame, Billy Corgan has just inducted Earl Hebner into the TNA Hall of Fame. Does that do anything for you? No. Okay, so first of all, Earl Hebner. Yeah, very well, we very deserving yeah. of being in a Hall of Fame. No, absolutely. Absolutely. But in my opinion, the TNA Hall of Fame means absolutely nothing. Yeah, nothing at all. You know? but Especially if, you know, they, they get bought out by WWE, then it really means nothing. Exactly. I mean, it already means next to nothing, mm-hmm. but that would solidify its worthlessness. In our uh, last bit of uh, TNA news here. James Storm took to uh, took to Twitter this weekend and uh, tweets out, so, at WWE NXT is in hashtag Nashville this Friday. 
and uh, he took it a step further besides teasing, and he actually showed up and sat front row at the live event. Really? Yes. Wow. Yep. Uh, he's also, you know, don't forget, he's a free agent. Um, it, I think it'd be awesome if James Storm ended up in uh, NXT. You know, it's funny because we don't even say WWE anymore. It's like, no, we know you go to NXT. Yeah. Why not? You know. So uh, yeah, he showed up and uh, he was sitting front row NXT event. Now no, there has been no confirmation or anything like that whether he was in talks with anybody from WWE while he was there. Or if he just actually was there just to see the show. Right. But the fact that they put it out there like that, you know? So, it's interesting. It's, it's, it is interesting. And then also, that WWE didn't block that tweet or yeah. have it removed or whatever. And just adding more... Uh, more more fuel to the... More fuel to the fire there. To the theoretical fire? Yes. Yes. Well, speaking of NXT live shows. Yes. Your girl, uh, Eva Marie. Yeah. Legitly... Knocked out Carmella and their match on Friday. Would <laughs> like like legitly knocked her out, knocked her unconscious. Really? Yeah. They said it was a blotched uh, spot where Carmella, I believe, was hanging off the bottom rope on the outside, and Eva Marie was trying to kind of, from what I read, kind of do that Roman Reigns kick that he does. Yeah. The drop kick to your head, and like she legit kicked Carmella and knocked her out. Okay, so is this not more proof that this girl does not know what she's doing? Now, um, you know, that's, God, I, I told myself when I sat down and we recorded the show today that I was actually going to give a little bit of credit to Eva Marie, because watching that match, she looked better, mm-hmm. she was performing moves better, but now I know that she, like, legit actually injured someone. All her credibility just... Gone. Gone. Yeah, they were saying that uh, as soon as she did the move and Carmella fell back, the referee checked on her and then immediately threw up the X sign, you know, and then more officials came out to check on her and stuff like that. And then uh, they said that, that they just rushed the end right then and there. Like, they just they, they finished the match right then and there. Just cut everything else out, finished the match, and just took care of what they had to take care of. Well, it shouldn't look that way on the on the video, you know? Because they did the whole ten count and all that crap. So, hmm. well, this is no. This was the NXT live event. Oh, so this wasn't. This wasn't televised. Oh. This was the live event that James Storm was at. Oh. <sighs> As he just shakes his head. Um. <laughs> so let me ask you, man. Have you been watching Total Divas? Yeah, of course. Okay. What did you? I I haven't watched it, but I've 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 read everything online and stuff. So the season finale has Dolph Ziggler trying to take Nikki Bella back. Yeah. What do you What do you bring away from that? Uh, you know, I don't know. All season, all season, they've pitched, and you wait, and you don't get the payoff to the final episode, and then you really don't get the payoff. Um, at this point, like, I'm pretty what sure. What if they wait? Go back. What have they talked about all season? All season, it was like these small little like glimpses of Dolph uh, trying to telling Nikki that I could, you know, I could give you children, I could give you a husband. Right. All season, like every time, it's like next on Total Divas. It's just like shh, shh, shh. it was in the teaser for second season, okay. and then you don't even get any kind of anything until the second to the last episode, and then not even a full payoff in the final episode of the season. Hmm. Um, I'm not really sure what they're doing with it. I'm not sure what the point is. Uh, I mean, it's, it's reality TV, so obviously at this point we all know this is probably just all, you know, made to... Do you think there's any truth to any of this? What has Cena's response been to any of this? The, Cena has had no response to it. Okay. It's not anything... Uh, oh, so you haven't watched it, right? Okay. So there has been no discussion between Nikki Bella and John Cena about what's going on. Okay. Like, it played out like she was, uh, the Bellas were out to dinner, the Bella family, and Daniel Bryan were out to dinner. Dolph happened to be at the same place with, uh, I believe, his parents. Okay. Um, ran into the Bellas. Nikki invited them to, to, they pulled over a table, 
you know, bigger table so they could stay with, sit with them and have dinner. Mm-hmm. So both of the families had dinner together. Um, at the, was Johnny Ace there? Johnny Ace. John Laurinaitis. Not that I saw, no. Okay. Um, there was some uh, ball busting, you know, for lack of a better term. Okay. Uh, Daniel Bryan was giving Nikki some crap about it, saying, you know, to him it looked like, you know, it was a date, and she was like, it was definitely not a date. It was not like it was planned. and Right. You know, and he kind of like was ribbing her for like, quote unquote, cheating on John. Okay. As a joke, but uh, as it went on, you know, he keeps approaching her. He, they, he gets very flirty with Nikki. Okay. And uh, then Bree starts to take offense to it because she feels like that Nikki shouldn't be okay with another man flirting with her when she's in a relationship. Right. And, um, you know, you find out that they had some history when they were younger, mm-hmm. that they dated for a while and it just didn't work out. Um, it sounds like most of that was on Dolph. Yeah. That he was just younger, and but now he's, you know, wants her back. I guess he's never... Like he's more mature. Yeah, he's never fallen out of love with her, and he's a more mature man now, and mm-hmm. can give her the things she wants. But uh, she doesn't seem to be wanting to take those steps. So, I mean... And it ended with them talking. The season ended with them talking outside of an event. And he moves in to kiss her. And it looks like she goes for a dodge. Mm-hmm. But then it was like, yeah, the end of the episode. Gotcha. And we won't get anything till next season, which is just lame. Hmm. So you think this at all will play into uh, any kind of storyline on um, TV? Yeah. As far as like the actual wrestling aspect and not Total Divas. And, and I mean that because it's like they're showing Dolph took Lana from Rusev. Right. Now he's taking Summer Rae from what it appears. You know, are they are they uh, prepping this guy to be like the girlfriend stealer? Like, well, isn't he already kind of? I mean, now he's taking Nikki. Because like, 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 we all know Cena's number one thing is his job. That's his passion. You know, and he's even told that to Nikki. And he's like, you know, this is this is my thing. I put this before everything. You know, mm-hmm. um, so is it one of those situations where backstage this really is going on, and John's gonna be like, "All right, fine, whatever ha- you want her, you can have her," and then McMahon's like, "Let's turn this into a storyline," you know, and John's gonna be like, "All right, cool," because I'm all about the business first, right? You know, it's you know it could be a possibility. Um, the show would be a good platform to build storylines on, uh, even though the show is. Way behind on right. know, where, yeah, where, so where they would have actually to hold currently off. are in wrestling. Which, I mean, works for the biz then because they can play off their storylines mm-hmm. and then fuel this in later. But, I mean, there's not really too much that has happened on the show that has ever really had any payoff on the, uh, in wrestling. Right. Um, as far as, I mean, as weird as this sounds... I believe that show has an audience that hasn't crossed over to wrestling. No, oh, I, yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree. Um, I know people that actually watch that show and do not follow wrestling, which I find weird. Mm-hmm. Those people are Eva Marie fans <laughs> because they just don't know. Right, right. So, uh, Cena this past summer requested off ninety days about. Pretty much because he's been pulled from every live event. He's been pulled from television shows, not advertised for pay-per-views, all the way through December. From the beginning of October almost to December. Really? Yeah. Um, WWE and Cena are citing it as personal reasons. And they're granting John this time off. So, do you think anything with the Nikki and Dolph thing might tie into this? Because Nikki's not, that we know of, that they, they haven't announced that she's taking time off. Maybe. You Maybe know. there's like a real thing happening there and it's just not, uh, I don't know, man. It is strange. It, it is strange. So I mean, now. Request, that's a lot of time to take off. Yeah. Especially for a guy months. that's a workhorse mm-hmm. for the company. So now what happens to the U.S. title? Do you think uh-huh. he drops it? Do you think he just disappears with it for a while? What would be the point of that, then, though? Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've built that... In my opinion, they've built the title up, the U.S. title, have more prestige 
than the Intercontinental title. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, for lack of a better term, let Cena take his ball and go home. Right. That doesn't seem like a very WWE type thing to do. Now, three months with no John Cena. Do you think WWE television can handle that? Do you I think, think it'll be all right. I think it's it's you know it'll give you a good opportunity to see who can break out from the pack. Interesting, because they're going to need to fill that space with someone. Oh, I agree. And I feel like there's plenty of talent there to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, honestly, I, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of seeing the same thing all the time. Um, I'm getting a little bored of the Bray Wyatt um, feud with uh, Roman Reigns. It's been going on for a while now. Um, Rusev and Dolph has been going on for a while now. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't understand why um, they have to, they built, I mean, I understand why they built Big Show back up. Yeah, they had to make him look like a credible threat to Brock yeah. Lesnar. They but, can't have another Bo Dallas you know, uh, Beast in the East. You know, where he just dismantles the guy. Yeah. So it's just, uh, I don't know, man. It's it's time. It, it'll be good for the new blood to try and get in there and make a name for themselves if they can. Hmm. You know, I mean, how long, how many more times are we going to have to see Neville versus Stardust? Yeah, that's getting really, really stale. How many more times are we going to have to see New Day versus the, the Dudleys, Dudleys or Sheamus versus Randy Orton. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's it. getting kind of... Uh... See, I'm glad you bring that up because it's a good segue into something else I had here. Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt at Hell in a Cell. Uh-huh. Is this the final chapter? I would hope so. Is it a, is it a Hell in a Cell match? Yeah. I would hope so. You don't think it's another wrinkle <clears throat> into an ongoing story where... Somebody else gets introduced into the Wyatt family, or a third man comes in and joins Reigns and Ambrose. I I mean, it could go either way. We know WWE likes to drag out their storylines. Um, with losing John Cena, would it be a good idea to like dump a, a storyline that they've put work into? I don't Probably think so. not. No. But uh, I personally would like to see it be done with, but that's never anything that they do. You know, it, it's like, um, why are they... I'm not really, I mean, okay, I understand story-wise the Kane and, and Rollins thing. Mm-hmm. I'm just not appreciating it. You right. know, it's, it's Kane is so far out of the game now at this point for me that, like, putting him back in the title picture just seems, it's forced. Oh, yeah, because you know he's not taking it. I I would completely agree there. I mean, what credibility... Are you building with a guy if all he's doing is beating up old guys? Like, and how long can they keep Brock away from that title? Yeah. Yeah, eventually he's going to have to come around to it. I mean, it it makes it interesting to see what they're going to do at Survivor Series if the Brock Taker stuff is done at Hell in a Cell. You know, if the Kane-Rollins angle is done at Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. If there's no John Cena, you know? Um if the Wyatt Reign stuff is done at Hell in a Cell. It seems like Hell in a Cell is probably going to be the spot where they decide to tie up all these storylines. Right. You know? Um, one storyline that's really just kind of bothering me because I'm not exactly 100% sure what's going on is uh, Paige and Charlotte and Becky because Paige is pretty much turned on them. Yeah. But they're still being they're considered like, Team PCB... Yeah. And they're still tagging together. It's just Paige has a chip on her shoulder. So I'm not exactly sure what's even going on there anymore. It's, um, this this whole Divas Revolution is unfortunately taking a bad turn. And, um, I think sooner rather than later, they need to split these girls up and get back to some competition. Yeah. Because, I mean, has Charlotte defended the belt since she got it? I mean, I know she's only had it, what, like two weeks, three weeks maybe? Something like that. But still, has she defended it yet? I don't remember. Didn't she have a rematch the next night on Raw? No, she wrestled Brie Bella. Okay. Because okay. they're saving the rematch for pay-per-view, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, for Hell in a Cell. Which, uh, you know. What's the rumor three-way between Brie, or excuse me, Nikki, uh, Paige, and Charlotte? 
I mean, it's it's just a shame that you've brought all this great female talent up to the roster, and in my opinion, they're getting overshadowed by the NXT girls still. Yeah. You know, you've got uh, you've got coming Wednesday the, the next NXT event. What, Respect, I believe it's called. Is that this Wednesday already? Yeah. Wow. It'll be this Wednesday. Okay. And you've got the Iron Man match between the boss. Iron Woman. I'm sorry. Yeah, Iron Woman match. The boss, Sasha Banks, and the hugger, NXT Women's Champion, Bailey. We know Bailey's going over in that match. Well, yeah, obviously, because what was the point of... But still, you know for a fact, even though that as fans, we can speculate, and we pretty much know that Bailey's going to retain, because what was the point be in giving it back to Sasha Banks... When you moved her up to the to the uh, the main, main roster, roster, you know that those girls are going to put on a hell of a match, mm-hmm. a hell of a match. You know we're still months after their match uh, when Bailey won, and, the and we're Slam. still talking about it. The SummerSlam weekend was at NXT Takeover in yeah. New Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's I feel it's shameful for the main roster girls to be overshadowed by those two. Absolutely. Like why aren't why aren't we seeing those kind of performances on the main roster? Absolutely. I agree. You know? That's the point. You know, you're at the main roster. You're bringing your A game. Yeah. Yeah, It's it, it seems as like it's almost reversed. Like, you bring your A game to the minor leagues to show that you belong in the main roster. And then once you get to the main roster and you get that the money and you get the, the, the more exposure, you get lazy. It almost seems to me like a misstep in... Um... In just the production, the production of the show on the main level, I they they've been saying because ratings have hit like an all time low, um, that Vince has been very furious backstage uh, with the writers. You know, um, my my thing is okay. Look at how NXT is being done. It's Triple H. He's got like one or two writers. It's a very small team. You could probably count them on one hand. Whereas Raw and SmackDown have a large room full of people. Why don't then I don't know if it's an ego thing or what. Why don't you go back to that? You know, we, I think we discussed this last week. We were talking about how the Attitude Era was written by Vince and like two or three other guys, and that's it. You know, I think the less cooks in the kitchen are what will be able to uh, to get these ratings up because it's less less cl- excuse me less clutter in the script. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll it'll streamline it a lot more. I I don't see why they just don't go that route again. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. And at especially all. with SmackDown moving to USA, I believe that, you know what, now is the time for whatever change you're going to implement, you need to do it, you know, beginning uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That would be the perfect time to do it. You know, start uh, fresh. Obviously, the, obviously, as you wrote in your blog, that uh, with the, the packaging of the new WWE figures, Mm -hmm. clearly brands are coming back. Otherwise, I don't see a reason why you would say this, you know, this figure is raw, this person is smacked on. There's no reason. I mean, they also have a separate one for NXT and for Legends, but yeah, I agree with you, Raw SmackDown. That's a little fishy right there. It it just, it's like, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to why you would do that if brands weren't returning. Which, I mean, we've said in the past on the show, it would be a good step because of the amount of talent that's underused and the fact that SmackDown has really become like a throwaway show. Mm-hmm. We even did that one episode where we drafted. One yeah. of us was in charge of Raw, one of us was in charge of SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And we had people online, uh, we were asking whose show they would rather watch based on our rosters. So, And I ended up winning that. That was cool. Yeah, bite me. <laughs> um, you know, I also kind of feel like that... Uh, Maybe with the branding of the Divas, maybe the Divas won't be... Maybe if they if they bring the Raw and SmackDown brands back as separate brands, maybe the Divas will not be part of that. The Divas just will be collectively used, however they're going to use them. Because hmm. it's not like there's enough Divas to... I mean, what are you going to get? Like five and five in each show, four and four in each show? Right. You know, it would That'll get real stale real fast. Yeah, real fast. Within the week. So why not just keep it, the Divas are crossover. Right. You know, because obviously, in my opinion, they're becoming the draw. Really? I think so. Hmm. I, I, mean, I think they're becoming part of the bigger picture. It's becoming, yeah, but I, I feel like, you know, in all honesty, like, 
I don't watch the events. I don't watch anything live. I watch it after it's been DVR, and you know, so I can fast through commercials. And then if a match hits, I'm not interested. In, I don't even watch it. Right. But you know what? I watch every Divas match. Hmm. It's interesting. Very interesting. Well, speaking of things to watch, uh, the upcoming DVD from WWE Sting Into the Light will include footage from him first arriving at WWE to meet with Triple H and Vince. Uh, it also features a lot of backstage interactions he had at WrestleMania 31 with Seth Rollins, Paul Heyman, the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was going to say Terminator, but um, that'd be interesting. I'm, the, Ar- I'm, I'm, the Arnold Schwarzenegger? The Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was going to say the Terminator, but um, that'd be interesting to watch. Things first. WWE produced DVD. Yeah. Um, not counting the best of Sting DVD because that was just a compilation. Right. But uh, I'm curious as to what else is going to be on this DVD. Um, I want to know if it's a documentary. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume it is because they just already put out the compilation one. Um, and if so, do they discuss his TNA days? My, that's a good question. I would, I would also, I'm curious as why would they have not waited to do something like that after he was inducted? Very true. Like, why jump on the Sting money train when you're pretty much going to have to rewalk this ground later at a later date when he officially retires and becomes a legend? You know? Right. I don't know the release date for this DVD, though. So, uh, it may be the end of this year. It may be next year. I don't know yet. One DVD that I really can't wait for is the Eric Bischoff one. Yeah. What do you, uh, did you watch on the network his uh, half hour special, the top 10 Eric Bischoff controversial moments? No, I didn't. That was pretty good. I I want to. Um, But now that Eric Bischoff is back in the fold, it seems that he's going to be around for a while. What do you think, uh, what kind of role do you think he'd play, if any, on TV? I'd like to see, Eric Bischoff is a great on TV personality. Yeah. But I know he's got a lot of other things going on, so I don't know if he can devote that weekly uh, time to right. doing it. But I don't know. What do you think? I mean, if, you know, it's... it's uh, I like Bischoff. I feel like, you know, it's better not to rely on the past, but keep the eye on the... F- I mean, it's, it's nice to bring it in, because then you bring in people that'll watch just for, like, the nostalgia factor of who he is. But at the same time, man, eye on the future. Like... I think as as much as WWE is trying to like shut down like other pr- promotions, they need to start looking at things other promotions do. Managers and valets need to come back into play hard. Okay. Like there is a complete lack of them. They bring a dynamic to things that that just aren't there. So that's that would be kind of my argument for okay. It would be good to see him come back if he was like in a managerial kind of you know. Not like Factor. would would you say like managerial as in like Paul Heyman to Brock Lesnar? Yeah. Okay, not managerial like Raw or SmackDown. Right. GM. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, what if they do the brand split and they bring him back as one of the GMs? I mean, yeah, that, I guess that works. You'd be all right with it. It'd, it'd be okay because I mean, then he's not really, you know, as long as he doesn't have to come out to the crowd, then he doesn't have to be there every week. Right. You know, he can do all his stuff pre-taped. Yeah. So, I mean, it would work for his schedule, but then I don't really know what his schedule is. Yeah, well, I just know he's got a lot of stuff going on, you know, with his uh, his brewing company and his production company with uh, the guy from the Wonder Years, Jason Harvey. So, a lot going on with him. But uh, I've always been an Eric Bischoff fan, you know. Yeah. Uh, very entertaining person, very entertaining personality. So, I think... They should find some way to put him on TV. But like I said, I'm very anxious to see what this DVD release of Eric Bischoff is going to be. Uh, will it compete with the Paul Heyman one? Will it be better? Um, that's, I don't know. I honestly don't, I, I think it has a chance to compete with the Paul Heyman and be better if they get the Hulk Hogan footage and the interviews. Um, because... Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff, those two names are synonymous with each other. And I don't think you can do a proper Eric Bischoff documentary, DVD, whatever, without having some Hulk Hogan stuff. And I don't mean the, let's get some archived Hulk Hogan footage. You mean like footage. some right now, current yeah, Hulk exactly. Hogan interviews. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you were saying that last week, I 100% agree. And uh, if anything, you know, if Hogan's smart, keeps his mouth shut, 
this Jimmy Snuka crap might eclipse the mistake of Hogan. Right. Which culturally, I mean, not culturally, but fan wise, doesn't seem like too many people are on that, like, you know, let's do it with Hulk Hogan thing. Mm-hmm. It seemed like a lot of people were behind him and it was just a mistake and he's a good dude and just let go. So you never know. They might. On, you know, on that note, I still see his figures in stores. Yeah. Even though they were supposed to have been pulled, I still see them. Very true. So. I think what happened was that they're, they've stopped production on it. Like I producing don't. new figures? Yeah. Or, or the DVD? Uh, well, both, since you brought up the figures. Right. But I, I think with Mattel, it was more like, hey, stop production on all Hollywood or on all Hulk Hogan merchandise. You know, whatever you have is whatever you have. Don't right. do any more, you know? So, I mean, he could come back. Yeah, it would be very interesting. But I agree, you know, he's crucial to the to the Eric Bischoff story. Mm-hmm. So, moving on, though, I just, in, I guess you would say breaking news, because this was just posted, um, Ring Fest, Ringside Fest, was this past weekend. Um, for those that don't know, it's basically a convention for wrestling, but the main draw to it is Mattel, or whatever the current toy company is, showing off their newest uh, WWE toy products. Um, so, some news there. Um, there's a, a, a user on the forums named ZDB underscore wrestling, and he posted the following. Um, it says, there's an elite flashback Jericho schedule for 2016. Uh, Mark Henry will be the next Nation of Domination figure if the first two sell very well. Austin replaced Workout Hogan. Gorilla Monsoon and Mr. Fuji are signed. No Nasty Boys Goldberg or Shane. An Elite Cesaro is likely. Elite Neville is confirmed. Uh, Bigger Elite Ryback was confirmed. They also have the rights to produce Harlem Heat. Lita will be the next Elite Diva. And there's contract complications with Mick Foley. Um, Guy said he just talked to Bill. uh, Bill of Mattel Design Team for 20 minutes. He's an awesome guy. He was eager to answer questions. Uh, Bill said he won't be back on the forums. Uh, yeah, well, that's a whole other story. I'm not getting into that. Well, you know what? No, I can get into that. So, Saturday on the forums, uh, there were a lot of, shall we call them, not nice people. who were Trolls? Giving, sure, we'll call them trolls. Uh, they were giving Bill a very, very hard time about stuff. Like, why isn't this shown? Or why isn't that shown? Just giving the guy so much grief. Mm-hmm. So... He uh, announces that he won't be posting on the message boards anymore. You know, and it's like, dude, really? They, they offended him that bad that he's just like, I'm done with it. You know? Um, I'm sure he still reads it because there was a photo that was leaked of him showing uh, a ravishing Rick Rude figure. And he had his phone on the counter as he's holding the figure. And on the phone, like, somebody zoomed in on it and he was still on the message boards. So he's still reading them, but he's not... From what he says, he's not participating. So, thanks, you guys, for that. Because, you know, Bill's a nice guy. And you guys just kicked him out. Um, so, let's see. As far as figures go... Um, oh, this is all stuff that was announced uh, over on our uh, website. Most of it, as far as stuff that's in development. Mm-hmm. Um she says, uh, let's see here, I'm just skimming through. So on some figures, flashback Chris Jericho is 2016. Uh, he said he will make it to get everyone off of his back. <laughs> uh, Nation of Domination, Bill's very happy with The Rock and Farouk, who has been announced as an Elite 2-pack. Wow. Um, yeah. So would that be the first Elite 2-pack? No. Oh, they've done it in the past? Yeah, um, but in the past they were WWE legends. It, and they were Toys R Us exclusives. Like, they did Piper and Orton. They did um, the Bushwhackers. They did Sheik and Koloff. Um, so he says, uh, Bill's very happy with the Rock and Farouk. And when asked about the rest of the nation, he said D'Lo is not currently signed. So that answers your earlier. Uh, no, that wasn't you. Sorry. I get you guys confused. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, comma <clears throat> is possible, but most likely the next member to be made is Mark Henry. Bill said he's tired of making the same Henry over and over, so this would be something different. Uh, He doesn't put Kama off the table, but Henry likely come first. Um, There's a lot of battle packs coming out. Uh, Cena, Austin, and Pillman Ambrose. 
Bill had the last minute takeout workout gear Hogan and Austin went uh, went to Cena, but Bill quickly uh, slotted Pillman for Ambrose. Um, I saw that Bill Brian Pillman basic. I'm not impressed. Um, they got some Battle Pack Divas belt. Yeah, uh, they're adding the pink Diva logo to the center. Uh, I, like I mentioned to you, they're making a new Bella Pack uh, two pack. Yeah, so that sucks for you, but whatever. They're in green outfits. Uh, they got a Sasha Banks coming out. Gorilla Monsoon and Mr. Fuji, their sign. Bill liked to do them, but he said it uh, depends on how the sales of the Jimmy Hart, Bobby Heenan figures do, which I think they're going to do phenomenal because Bobby Heenan looks awesome. Yeah. And he comes in a Hall of Fame four-pack with Andre the Giant, Mr. Perfect, and Big John Stud. Nice. And uh, Jimmy Hart is a single-carded figure in the Hall of Fame Series 3. And it's Jimmy Hart, Million Dollar Man, Cactus Jack, and Macho King. So nice. Um, Honky Tonk's Honky Tonk Man's contract. He resigned a while ago. Like I mentioned, no Nasty Boys, Goldberg or Shane. Um, there's a couple other little odds and ends here. Oh no, Shane O'Mac, huh? Yeah, he said he's not signed. Uh, Lita's still in development. She's the next Elite Diva that's going to be coming out. Um, they announced an Elite Umaga, uh, which looks absolutely beautiful. Um, as far as Mick Foley's status goes, it says, this guy's got it quoted as the weirdest slash vague answer of the day. I asked Bill if the Cactus Jack shown by WWE.com is the fourth figure in the Hall of Fame Series 3, and he was like, eh, it's complicated. He gave the same answer in general to Foley's contract, specifically about do love, too. He was very strange about it and kind of threw him off. Uh, so that's um, that's something that was been going around lately is the, the, the status of Mick Foley. Yeah. Because... People don't know what's going on with it. So, I, I personally say, if you get Foley on your contract, you're going to put another Foley figure out there. Give us the Dude Love. We don't need another Mankind. We don't need another Cactus Jack. Give us Dude Love. Um, one thing that was coming off this that WrestleFest thing is a lot of people were upset that the number of re-releases that Mattel's putting out. They're re-releasing NWO Kevin Nash with a new head sculpt and some different accessories as a ringside exclusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're re-releasing the, Flash, the ringside exclusive flashback Brock Lesnar as a WrestleMania 32 elite. They're re-releasing um, the Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, elite with the championship belts as a defining moments figure. They're supposedly he's the replacement for uh, Hogan. So there are a lot of, a lot of replacements um, or not replacements, re-releases and people are upset about it. They're re-releasing Big Boss Man, you know, and hardcore collectors are like, why are you re-releasing these guys? Give... The slot for this re-released figure could go to somebody who we've been anticipating who we haven't gotten yet. Right. Mattel is looking at it, or Bill, from what I understand, as the prices on some of these things, because you know, you you buy some of these wrestling figures. Uh Once they're not on shelves anymore, the prices skyrocket. Yeah. So he's kind of being fair to those who missed out the first time mm-hmm. and putting these char- some of these characters re-released. Now, they're just not an exact re-release. They'll have some tweaks to them. Right. Maybe a different paint scheme. Right. Maybe some different accessories. Something. That- but then still for collectors like me that just want a single figure in their collection. Yeah. You don't have to. That's that's great. Yeah. You know? So, but there's a lot of people. Screw scalpers, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But there's a lot of people upset about that. And that's one of the big things that they were giving Bill a hard time about, which is one of the reasons he left. The message boards. And you know who it probably is? It's probably a whole scalpers giving them crap because they're not going to be able to buy new figures and scalp the f- out of them. Yeah. Or you look know, at it and uh, be like, hey, you know, I can't get 60 bucks for my big boss man anymore. Right. You know? It's whatever, man. But, uh, let's talk our final uh, thing for this episode, man. The Masses Square Garden Show. Yeah. The live event that was televised on the uh, WWE Network. Did you happen to watch it? Most of it. What you th- what What were your thoughts on the event in general coming away? Meh. You know, I was left very meh with it. So was as, I. As much as they were like, build up, build up, build up. Eh, you know. The big build up to me was just to see the return of Brock Lesnar in action. Yeah. That was it. Um, that was their selling point because nothing that happened at this event, save for Charlotte and Becky Lynch doing the page what Paige did to them on Raw a couple weeks back, you know, abandoning abandoning her when she needed the tag. Right. Nothing else happened in this story. Yeah, no. You know, or, or in this Got event. to see Lance Storm. Yeah, we got to see Lance Storm. We got to see Jackal sitting next yeah. to him. Um, Cyrus. Uh, but, you know, they were just sitting front row. 
because uh, it was Jericho's 25th anniversary, which uh, I thought it was his 20th, 25th, 25th, 25th. Oh, um, his, so yeah, nothing his really black cluster 25th anniversary. Yeah. Like I'm going to wrestle for the intercontinental title and not going to win it. Cause you know, what would that point be? Yeah. I think, uh, not, like I said, nothing significant. It felt really thrown together. It was nothing significant happened. It was done just because it's content for the network. Yeah. You know, and you got to see, like I said, the return of Brock Lesnar in action. Um, that doesn't have to do I mean, with The Undertaker. With uh, with Cena leaving for three months, would it not have been a good idea just to drop the U.S. title to Rollins? It would have been. Last night? But. Maybe you could give that to Kane. Something. Even though I don't really feel like that's a... Two nights ago, he meant. You know, a good move. Right. I don't know, man. Like, just coming away from this event, it was something to watch on a Saturday night, you know. Um, Like I said, it adds content to the network, which is the purpose of the network. Which is why I think if WWE bought TNA or if they buy TNA, throwing all that stuff on there would be great. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Because I'd watch it. I definitely would watch it. Um, one of the reasons I don't watch Impact now is just because I don't have Destination America. Yeah. But, uh... Um, You're not missing anything. Yeah, I know. You're not. But, I mean... And like, I don't say that just to, like, discredit any of those guys. It's just... You know... The talent pool is only so deep, man. Right. And... I don't believe TNA has got a lot of that. Like, in my opinion, Ring of Honor has got more talent than than TNA does. Right. I find Eric Young to be annoying. <laughs> uh, I would hope that he does never show up in the WWE or NXT. Uh, when a guy talks like this, it's, he like reminds me of those old school heels. You know? Right. That had horrible speaking voices and, you know, you could get away with it because it was like the 80s. Mm-hmm. But those days are done, man. Right. Like he's trying to bring it back yeah. almost. No, I, I see what you're saying. You know, not to, I'm not trying to discredit their organization, but they're just, I mean, there's a reason they're going under. They're not on par with anything. Right. You know, um, I think if, if Ring of Honor is successful, I think a lot of that success is to do with great wrestlers and a tight show, you mm-hmm. know, um, they don't waste a lot of time on anything. Right. <sighs> I don't know, man. And those over the top, you gotta love over the top characters too. Like it's got a very ECW feel to it, mm-hmm. which is always good because everybody needs a little ECW in their life. Yeah, but we're getting off subject. So, so going back, this Madison Square Garden show. Yeah, it's a wash for me. Yeah, I really think that there's so much momentum built up to um, NXT respect and that Iron Woman match mm-hmm. that it's hard to even have really cared about what they were going to do with Brock. Yeah. Like, I feel like they read signed Brock and like buried him. No, now here, here's something interesting here. Stone Cold has shot down rumors about him fighting Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32. Brock Lesnar will be on the podcast, which I'm very, very interested in listening yeah. to um, or watching as the case will be, because it'll be on the network. Do you think that uh, there's going to be an angle planted there? There could be. There should be. They're, they're, if they're smart, yeah. There should be. I mean, is Austin in the kind of shape to get back in the ring? Have you seen him? Well, no, I'm saying the man looks good, but is he ring worthy? He's not in any, and, and this is not anything current, but and this is no news, but I don't think he'd be able to quote unquote visit Suplex City. Yeah, no. You know, um, but. The only other role which I see him in which would actually upset me is being a guest referee. And we've been there, we've done that with Austin at WrestleMania 20. You know, um, I heard people saying, you know, well, what catalyst would they have to have Austin versus Brock? You know, there could be a look. You know, there could be something coming up about uh, the the talk that Austin had with Heyman. No, absolutely. Or they uh, they they could talk about how their careers are what they are. And Lesnar can drop in a sly comment saying, you know, hey, uh, who knows where we'd been had you not taken your ball and went home when you were supposed to put me over all those years ago. You know, and then Austin could take offense to that. Totally. 
you know, and build from there. You know, and that's that's all it takes, especially with two guys like Brock Lesnar and Stone Cold. I think I almost feel like that's uh, there's a built-in problem with Brock Lesnar now, and it's Suplex City. Yeah, it's becoming this 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 niche. It's, it's how many people can take that, right? And I don't think there's many left that can. And Stone Cold's definitely not one of those people that could take it. Right. I'm surprised Undertaker did. Yeah. And yeah. he's got to do it again. Yeah. And he, man, you know, though, I've got to give Taker credit because he looked so good coming back. And I really, I really can't get over how good he looked. Like, fluid in movement. He didn't look old. And he didn't look like, he didn't look out of place in the ring. He looked really good. Right. I'm excited to see their, their health in the cell. But, uh, yeah, it's the event for me at MSG, just a wash. Um, Brock, I don't know what they're doing with him, but, you know, I, I was appreciating him with the belt and not being around as often. Yeah. Um, I mean, how long are they going to let Rollins hold that belt? You know? Right. Like, I understand, like, we've had the discussion about, like, the belt not being, like, a turnstile. But, man, it's it, you can't just, like, you know... It's, I feel like it's boring to see the same person hold the belt over and over, like for like a steady length of time, you know? Yeah. You want to see some turnover. People have bad days. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know? Uh, it's like, <laughs> I was I was watching boxing before you came over, and this guy totally got beat up. And at the end of the match, he was asked, you know, was, how, was this guy one of the toughest opponents you've ever fought? And he was like, no. The guy le- legitimately said, no, he wasn't. But wow. it, it was just his day. And right. it wasn't mine. Right. And we, you need you need some of that, man. Yeah. You know, let's get that title around a little bit. Because it's been on Rollins too long. It needs to go to somebody else. See, but here's another thing, though. When you have a title for so long, doesn't that legitimize you as opposed to seeing a title just go from guy to guy to guy? Because that bothers me. It's like, it's just, it's, the, the title becomes just a prop. Yeah, but wouldn't it would it bother would it bother you so much to see someone like lose it every once in a while? Yeah, like I, who's to say Rollins can't drop it a pay per view and then pick it back up? See, if that, if something like that happened, that's different. But if like you're gonna bounce it, like we'll use the uh, Intercontinental t- Title for example. Last in the last year, you you've had what Luke Harper, Kevin Owens, Ryback. Um, I know I'm missing somebody. Uh, who was the Intercontinental Champion before Ryback? See, we can't even think about it. Wow, who was the Intercontinental? Who did Ryback win it from? It wasn't Miz, was it? No. No. Oh, he won in a... Didn't he win it in a tournament? Because Daniel Bryan had to vacate the title? That's right. Daniel Bryan was a C? Yeah. So that's what I mean, though. That's what happens when the title bounces yeah, around that, way too much. I don't think that title was meant to bounce around that much, though. Exactly, it's not. None of the titles should bounce around that I much. I mean, I really felt like that Daniel Bryan, had he not been re-injured, would have had a run with that. Belt. None of those titles should bounce around that much, man. That's what legitimizes a champion, because you're able to hold on to this belt and defend it to all challengers. But when the belt is constantly jumping from okay, this guy so, to this guy to this guy, it kind of makes it worthless. Right, and you look I, like a crap champion. I see the flaw in my logic now. Let's start seeing the program move forward with different guys. You know, let's not see month in and month out the same. The, let's let the champ defend against somebody else. You know? You know? Give someone else their moment. That's how it is, man. That's all I got for this week, man. You got anything? It's Nothing. Been a crazy I'm week. Ready to see that... Uh, NXT pay per view on Wednesday. Yeah, that is well, not pay per view, but you know, special. Yeah, the live event special. Their show. That ought to be good, respect. man. Respect. Yeah, it will be good. Um, Do you predict uh, Balor and Samoa Joe turning on each other? Do you predict? The, I don't. The Balor Honestly, Club. Or... I really. W- yeah, now I saw that the graphic now and and the, the belt. and I feel like if anything, like this could be the formation of the start of the Balor Club. I think Samoa Joe could be the first member. Hmm. I'm actually was kind of amazed a couple weeks ago that they scrubbed out my boys Enzo and Cast to those two. You were surprised? Yeah, I was. No, that I was upset. That I mean, they I had understand <laughs> that. I understand that Finn's the champion and it's Samoa Joe, and then I felt like if anything, that could have been a hard fought match that was just ended in a miscommunication between Samoa Joe and Finn, costing them the match. Right. 
over them being outperformed by Enzo and Cass. Uh-huh. But I felt like it would be a push. I feel like they're burying Enzo and Cass for some reason. And I feel like Cass's mic skills are improving. Right. And I don't understand why you would bury such a great tag team. Of course, you know, I felt the same thing with the Vaude Villains. I thought they were good, and I thought they got buried, and they came back and gave them the belt. So, mm-hmm. who knows, you know? Right. But, uh, yeah, maybe this is the formation of the Battle Club. We'll see. We will see. Um, especially this upcoming uh, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I got. Next uh, next week, we won't have an episode of The Lockup due to uh, our season winding down, as we do every year. Uh, November is usually the last of our season, but October is a very busy month for the both of us. So we're going to have a couple of bye weeks here, not just for the lockup, but possibly for the spinner rack as well. Um, so if you want to keep up with us and we with you, we will continuously be on our website, comicsremix.com with news updates, blogs, thoughts, and opinions. Cause that's what that is more so than yeah. the news. Uh, we don't do it every day. Because we're not reporting news, it's more of when we have a moment, we will give you our thoughts and opinions. Um, so definitely expect some feedback from both of us next during this by the weekend on NXT Respect. Oh yeah, most definitely. I know I'll be hitting that for sure. Most definitely. Um, questions, comments, concerns, you can hit us up. Uh, Junior at comicsremix dot com, Brian at comicsremix dot com, Alex at comicsremix dot com. Check out. Uh, Wednesday's episode of the Spinner Rack, which should be interesting because we've got a lot of uh, comic-centrated news for you as well. Um, there will be a bye week for the Spinner Rack as well next week. I'll get to that, I guess, on the Spinner Rack. Not next week. Um, what else do we got? Uh, check out uh, past episodes of Reviews Remixed. Did I say that right? Or I always think it's Remixed Reviews. I don't know which one it is. I get so confused. It's, it's your brand, man. It's your brand. I know. Would Vince McMahon forget one of his shows? Probably. No. no. We, we don't well, maybe know that. now. We don't know that. Check out <laughs> Alex's toy reviews. Uh, everything you can check is on comicsremix.com. You go to the top panel, you'll see about our shows and podcasts. That shows you everything you need to know. Um, that's all I got. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at comicsremix, at the Spinner Rack, on Instagram, Shy town Cyl- shy underscore town underscore Cylon. Um, That's it, buddy. Is that all the plugs? I believe so. I believe you got it. Let's talk toys coming soon. Still uh, in the process of doing that. Still in development. Yep, but it's going good. Development's going good. So, um, that's all I got, man. So we'll see you back here in two weeks. Have fun. Peace.